Henry Garrison hypothesized that predators will have bigger brains than their prey. He suggested that it would take more brains to catch supper than to flee, and studies supported his suggestions. The predator in search of a meal utilizes and acquires more brain mass than the animal they are chasing. What possible conditions would have led human brains to evolve such huge size so quickly to create the massive organ in use today? What compelled the need for so many synapses? What was driving us? What, if anything, will be chasing. Neoteny is the biological process that prolongs over the course of generations. Ancestor, embryo, and infant features and displays them in the bodies and behaviors of descendant adults. Hypothetically, our chimpanzee or bonobo-like progenitors gave birth to infants that exhibited physical characteristics and behavioral features that resembled the physical features and behavioral patterns of contemporary human adults. Chimpanzee infants exhibit a brain size which is large relative to their parents' brains and, similar to adult modern humans, chimpanzee babies display large eyes, small teeth, small chins, and upright carriage. In regards to behavior, young chimpanzees typically exhibit curiosity, playfulness, affection, and sociality. Among chimpanzees, only infants smile. Nyani suggests that the infants of our human ancestral forebears exhibited physical and behavioral features that eventually appeared in their adult descendants, contemporary human adults. What might have driven human evolution to unfold in this neotenous direction? Over the course of generations, changes in the rate and timing of maturation can dramatically adjust the evolution of the species. Evidence suggests that sexual selection can influence the rate and timing of maturation leading a species in a neoxenous direction. Studies were conducted by Dmitry Belyev with never before domesticated Russian silver foxes that engaged in long-term selective breeding strategies. These studies revealed astonishing changes in both the appearance and behavior of unfolding fox generations. In this experiment, 10% of the population of 465 foxes were chosen that naturally behaved in a relatively tame manner by displaying neotenous characteristics such as curiosity and relatively little fear. Over the course of these experiments in selective breeding, the descendants of these foxes demonstrated remarkable physical changes. For example, the foxes changed their fur coat colors and they molted less. Their ears flopped down. Barking emerged, tails rolled and started wagging. The female became available for sex more often. Adult skull shapes adjusted, becoming more infant-like. Through the targeted breeding of tame features, researchers were able to precipitate striking changes in descendant populations resulting in an increase in future generations' readiness to cooperate. Foxes became neoptimus. These results were achieved in less than 20 years. Garrison theorized that taxing the physical limits of a predator causes the animal's brain to grow in size. In our own evolutionary past, humans began to tax the ceiling threshold of what they could physically and mentally achieve, and then they continued to push that ceiling. There is only one thing that humans do that has no conceivable limit when it comes to success. That thing is art. Our species found a way to transcend nature's limitations on mental growth. We innovated the rhythmic art of movement, which permitted our brains to grow in size more quickly than predation could. What drove human evolution was the art of dance. Once humans began to dance, potential mates selected partners based on an ability to evoke deep emotions with moving bodies. Jane Goodall's observations of chimpanzees displaying in dance-like fashion of waterfalls and thunderstorms reflect an ingrained primate impulse to use movement to solicit sex as an expressive response to intense environmental stimuli. Once humans began to link noise, rhythm, movement, and procreation, there emerged what Geoffrey Miller described as mutual selection between those performers displaying features that encouraged copulation by those highly discriminating partners 
attracted to rhythm-infused rituals or routines. Brains exponentially increased in size because there was no ceiling in the number of synapses required for success. Brains grew larger in order to keep up with their larger brain peers. Peers who displayed increased prowess attempts, thus maintaining a selective advantage over the less adept artists. Humans competing to become the best dancers were manufacturing synapses as if they were chasing some highly intelligent, very picky prey, which they were. Humans were chasing each other. As was the case with foxes, early humans targeted and selected those dancers that behaved cooperatively. In the context of collective dances, we became tamer as our brains enlarged. Since large brains and cooperative behavior are closely associated with the features, we automatically became more tame as we grew an ability to dance, appreciate dance, and perform. By selecting talented dancers, our species altered our rate and timing of maturation. By selecting talented dancers, we prolonged infant features into later stages, choosing humans that were big-brained, cooperative, and tame. I hypothesize a change in the rate and timing of maturation, which results in neoteny and large brain descendants, is directly correlated with the fluctuating levels of testosterone and estrogen within human physiology. I suggest that testosterone influences the rate of maturation, with estrogen influencing the timing of maturation. It is likely that the distinct impact that these hormones have on an evolution is not isolated to our species alone, but is common among many species. Furthermore, one could consider this to be both a biological and social principle, as well as an elemental force at work at other evolutionary scales. Human evolution unfolds in a neotenous direction by exhibiting a prolongation of ancestor embryo and infant features into adults not yet born. A neotenous process of human evolution is reflected in contemporary social structure as values of cooperation become increasingly more visible in societies across the globe. As our species transforms biologically, evolving larger adult brains as the generations progress, unique features re-emerge in contemporary society as Aboriginal culture forebear features become the modern norm. Hierarchy is becoming horizontal. Secrecy is converting into transparency. Segregation is giving way to diversity. The new egalitarian surge is a neotenous surge, one that prolongs features of infants and Aboriginal culture into the global society of the present day. Consider that the rate and timing associated with neoteny operates not just in biology, but in society and possibly beyond. Neoteny impacts us personally, influences growth or ontogeny, influences the evolution of society, transforms species, changes ecosystems, and impacts our planet. Consider that neoteny represents a beginning of a journey and invokes the vital forces of biology society, and even physics. Where there are processes characterized by beginnings, it is possible neoteny is in play. Consider theorists seeking to understand how a universe evolves. What if they use the principles of neoteny to understand changes in the rate and timing of universe maturation? What if physicists discovered that just as dance drives human evolution, neoteny may be engaged in a cosmic dance?